All right, we're live. What? We're live. Not now, right? Are we yeah. live now? We are live now. We are live now. Well, let me switch my screen around here. Go game, go. Go, come go. We are live. 16 seconds, 17, 18, 19, 20 seconds in. Go game, go. Excellent. Next week, there's going to be something else. I like how we skip this week. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just go Especially to next week's show. You're going crazy. <laughs> we'll skip right to next week's show. <laughs> Hi, welcome to episode 617. <laughs> <laughs> so, Stuart, what did you want to talk about here at the beginning? So this week, like it says, we were talking about talking about movies, and then I was like, what about movies from 1982? And I thought about this because I got to listening to Journey. Now, I know it's, this isn't the right year, but there is a little something else that I just learned about this, too. So back in 1983, Journey was riding high, coming off of Escape, mm -hmm. and they put out Frontiers, which had a slew of hits off of it. Uh, so between... Between Escape and Frontiers came Tron in 1982. So there's, I'm going to be jumping a little bit because there's all kinds of things that made me think about this. But Tron, the Amico's coming. And we've been talking to Tommy. We had a discussion with him the other night on uh, OEB Pete's show. And, uh, and we're, that's one of the games we're hoping for is some Tronage. Um, and so Journey uh, had a tune in that movie and um wa la 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 i just had the i just was thinking of the name a little bit ago um it's called only solutions great song great soundtrack and a, a movie from 1982 then in 1983 they put out um frontiers they had multiple hits off of that and then they had their own video game um and you had they had lost all, because the the group what are they called like the groupanoids uh, had group stolen group. their instruments and they had to get them all back and then they have to make it you know to the next destination so um, so anyway so that happened and it just got me thinking about you know eighty two but what I didn't realize is in eighty two they there was actually plans to do a journey escape game for the Atari 2600. That actually came out, right? Did it come out? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Well, Atari had a, they had a journey game, pretty sure. They did. That's what I thought. As yeah. soon as you said that, I'm like, no, they did do that, didn't they? I'm pretty sure they did. Yeah. So all this stuff about 1982, it just was coming up, and I was like, and so so I, so now, so now this is where I have to look at Jeff and go, thank you, because I started mentioning 1982. And I was like, yeah, dude, you know, all the great movies of 82. And I listed a crap ton. And he goes, he what did texted, I say? <laughs> you texted me back. You go, I've seen two of those movies. <laughs> you know what, I mean, and it was everything from The Last Unicorn to. First Blood to Forty Eight Hours to uh, the Thing. It's going to be Grease Two. It's going to be shocking how few of these movies I saw. <laughs> I mean, it's really going to be shocking. Uh, Eighty two, I was busy because the Cardinals were winning their first World Championship in my lifetime. So, oh, okay, that's all I cared about in nineteen eighty two. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's Which all is I when I saw the Cardinals win, right? <clears throat> Did we win so, in 82, right? Oh, yeah. 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 I was bowling, if you can believe it, when the Cardinals won. Oh, that was so much fun because, I mean, growing up in the 70s, I mean, the Cardinals sucked in the 70s. They had so many bad teams. They had yeah. a lot of great players, but terrible teams. So it was just weird when the playoffs started. It's like, here's my Cardinals playing against, you know, they're like, all of a sudden now they're, showcase like i've seen you know dodgers and yankees and phillies and all yep. these teams and i couldn't believe it. it was like oh my gosh they're actually they're actually doing it yes 
And yes. uh, it was a great, I mean, <clears throat> one of my, <laughs> the, one of the coolest plays in that whole World Series, and this is all I'll talk about for the baseball, but <laughs> it was such an odd play. <clears throat> Tommy Herr was at the bat. Was at bat. Um, I think William McGee was on third. Ozzy Smith was on second. Less than two out. Her hits a fly ball, just a routine fly ball to center field. Gorman Thomas goes back, catches it, slips, doesn't fall all the way down. He slips, kind of catches him, comes back up. So William McGee tags up, scores, of course, but Ozzy Smith tagged up on second. He didn't just go to third. He came all the way around and scored. <laughs> so it was a sacrifice fly with two RBIs. I have never seen that in my life before. Wow. So it was bizarre. He had Bruce. some wheels. Crazy. That boy had some wheels. So you mentioned um, Tron and, and and Amico. You might have the record right now for high score in breakout. Really? I haven't seen anyone to do better yet. Yeah, 59,000. I was so close to 60. I was so close to 60,000. If you don't have the highest, you got one of the highest. It's... Well, really? Who did? Me? No, I said I think. You've the highest that I've seen so far. Okay, yeah. But I mean, the contest hasn't started yet. But um, I know, you, right? I'm like, you can it. do that during the contest period. I guess yeah, that'll I be know. November. I, I so. did. I have been sending pictures to Tommy. So uh, he's seen uh, them all. of breakout or something. Yeah. Else? Okay. Yeah, because at first you thought that was my score on. Um, oh, Moon Patrol. On Moon Patrol, he's like, make sure you post that. <laughs> and, I'm, and he goes, oh wait, that's the wrong game. <laughs> I, I can't do anything on Moon Patrol. I can beat the demo, and I've got like fourteen thousand points. Everyone else is scoring you know, like thirty-five thousand. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know if there's some kind of combination thing, and I'm not. I don't know about. I'm shooting everything I can shoot and jumping over everything, but right and going as fast as I can. So I don't. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Yeah, it's the same thing with breakout. I mean, I I've gotten into the fifties three times. But three times. You don't want to know how many times I've played that Fargan game already. I've only played like 15 minutes. I I, got I, don't a, even, yeah. I have to get a desk set up for it. Because right now I have this little tiny laptop sitting on a swivel stool in front of me <laughs> while I've got the mouse on the couch trying to work it. I did manage to get 42,000, which is pretty good for that setup. He's going with the mouse on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> in the family room. In the family room. It was Jeff. <laughs> on the couch with the mouse in the family room. <laughs> I didn't need too many clues for that one. So, you know, I pulled up my switch here. Yeah. Oh, wait, I can see it on my glasses. And before we get too much further, be sure to subscribe as oh, yeah. you're checking us out tonight, seeing what we're going to be talking about. We got a few things to talk about tonight. But yeah, so that was one thing. One of the, whoops, one of the good, um, go? <laughs> just remember. That's an upcoming shirt. And we got an upcoming shirt sure. with uh, the logo and our caricatures, too. But speaking of shirts, look at this. Yeah. This is a vintage. It's like 15 years old, this shirt. When I first started like writing uh, like these episodes for the, this TV show, Go Game Go. Yeah. I printed this out because I really like the logo. But this that's how old this shirt is. It's like 15 Holy years smokes. old. Holy smokes. It's how different. Did you print, it's how'd much you print smaller. it? Um, cafe press. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it's still hanging around. Still, it's got that cool distressed look now. Right. I gotta find mine. Mine has up and walked away. It's go game gone. Go. <laughs> it's out of here. There's there's our next shirt. <laughs> go game gone. Go game gone. There you go, buddy. We're golden tonight. Look out. So look out. I started my switch up because I haven't played that. I haven't done that much gaming this week because I've been pretty busy, but <clears throat> I like to play in spurts where I just a whole bunch of different games. Right. So I've been playing, playing Super Mario Brothers 35. Okay. Kirby Fighters 2. Lair of the Clockwork God. Okay. Super Battle Cards. Wow. Oh, I swear. Oh, oh, Super Punch Patrol. Okay. And I think that's it. Oh, I did play and I beat the demo for Pikmin 3 Deluxe because that demo just came out. Sweet. 
I uh, think I missed that. I missed getting that. You told oh, me about it, and I mi- I had a it was a busy day. I missed it. Oh, it's still out. Oh, it, the demo is out there then. Oh yeah. Okay, good. I don't think they'll get I rid of that. I missed it. Soon. I didn't find it, but nope. I don't know. I'll find it. So, um, do we know when the when the challenge thing is going to happen for breakout? I'm guessing November first, because okay. Moon Patrol goes through Halloween. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So I'll unless they push it back to December, but it's it's got to be coming up. Then I'll keep my secrets to myself. That's right. Tommy keeps mentioning that he's got the video. He told me a couple of days ago that he had the video was coming out, and then, and then when I sent him another high score, he goes, "Yeah, I'm working on getting the video out." <laughs> It's like I thought you were just working on that. So, so that was cool. Oh, uh, uh, an update on an old episode. Actually, the last one we did. Remember, I had the uh, I got it sitting right over here still. The stunt cycle, the motorcycle. Yeah, ride. yeah. Um, Tommy just did a video for what was it? Maybe it was Moon Patrol. I don't know. But then he did a tour of his hot, uh, game room. Yeah. And in there, he showed his stun cycle. So I took a picture of mine. I sent it, and I said, "Oh, I'm glad to see I'm not the only one that's kept their stun cycle around." Yeah. Uh, and I told my mom, and she said she bought that at Schnucks. What? And Schnucks is a local grocery store here in St. Louis. I was like, "Wait, a minute, you bought a stun cycle at a Schnucks?" But then I remember somebody on Twitter posted a Schnucks ad from like 1983 or so. Wow, and they and the whole ad was just all like video games, like ColecoVision and stuff they were selling. Yeah, I was like, I don't remember them ever selling video games. I mean, they rented them. Sure, right. Not then, but years later. But right, I don't know how I completely forgot all about that. Hmm. Like That's crazy. You buy a game system at your local grocery store. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> that um. Is- also, uh, I'm digging on all of the. Uh, I like it, but I know my wife loves it. Is doing the uh, new Animal Crossing Halloween stuff. She is digging on that, and I think it's gorgeous. They got some really cool stuff, and of course, I come from the land of pumpkin, just like some people come from the land down under. The um, land of plenty. <laughs> the land. <laughs> so. So I come from the land of pumpkin and um, we have the pumpkin festival and everything up there. So, uh, so being able to plant the pumpkins and see them come up in single form, they come up in doubles, they come up in triplets. Um, It's kind of cool. Kind of cool. So all the, all the different lights they've got going on and you get to buy the candy every day from the store, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. That's cool. She's all in costumes and faces painted deathly white. I think it's a lot of fun. I'm digging on it. And then uh, my son got me into uh, Hades. Uh, it wasn't oh, easy. I it? got in, hmm. <laughs> but he got That's me awesome. into that over the weekend. He's like, "You gotta, you gotta download Hades." I'm like, "Well, okay." So I thought there was some free download or something. And he goes, "He goes, well, no, you gotta buy it." And I was <laughs> like, "Oh, okay. It's a twenty five dollar game. Okay, that's not a problem. It's really cool. I really uh, like it." I've seen people play it. It looks really good. The yeah. art style is great. I can't wait. To, it is great. Mm. It, it reminds me of, uh, for any of us, any of you um, anime geeks out there, it gives me the feel of like uh, La Chevalier d'Eon. I know I'm butchering that in a French language. La Chevalier d'Eon. d'Eon, d'Eon. We're getting That's pretty classy here on Go Game Go. <laughs> so worldly. <laughs> That's the only French I know. <laughs> <laughs> French fries. <laughs> um, pommes frites. Um, so, so anyway, uh, but Hades. Uh, also, the upcoming uh, coming of Hammer Away. I'm going to be doing working on a uh, Eddie Van Halen uh, Van Halen show. Um, Ooh, excellent. And some of that's you know some of these shows are going to include um, readings from some books. So. I'll probably be bringing one of my Van Halen uh, biographies and uh, and stuff. So uh, a little bit of that. Uh, had a band audition the other night. They just got can- I, I canceled 
or it got canceled. And then I just said, you know what? I got too much going on. Uh, so I can't do it. But now I'm looking for a new guitar player. These are the kind of things that are happening. Hmm. Um, and also check out some, speaking of music, check out Liliac. Have you checked these guys out at all? Never heard of them. Okay, Liliac. They're actually coming to town. They're going to play the Diamond Music Hall on November 15th. Hmm. And it's a family band. It's brothers and sisters. The oldest, the, the older of the two sisters is the drummer. And the younger of the two sisters is the bass player and lead singer, which is my dream. Uh, it's kind of what I do. Um, so and an Osmond, then they have Osmond family thing going on here. What's that? They have an Osmond thing going on here. All I'd family. say more a Partridge family, okay. which is one of your favorites. Oh boy, <laughs> favorite Partridge family, Brady Bunch. We should do a TV. We should do a TV episode. <laughs> we should. We should. And not include them. <laughs> Batteries was, not included. Andy um, was born in 1982. 80, oh, oh, Anthem. That. Wow. Yeah. You know, Anthem, I got a really quick... I've already told this story about talking to my one of the newest staff at my school a couple of years ago. She and I were walking down the hall making sh small Man. chit chat. She was the new coach. And she said, have you always been from St. Louis? After I asked her the same. And I said, nope. I moved down here when I got married in 88. She goes, huh, I was born in 88. I go, that's really sweet. Just keep walking. <laughs> Just keep walking. More of a Gilligan's Isle. Yeah, buddy. I got all. I got the whole series over there. We were just talking about that last week, Gilligan's Island, for some reason. You know, wouldn't that be cool for an Amico game? Because you have multiple characters. Yeah. There has been a Gilligan's Island game. I think that I think would be NES, great. Yeah. I mean, it's perfect. You can all work together to get out, but you never leave. And it has to have that giant spider in the game. Oh, dude, the spider. Oh, <laughs> I hated spiders as a kid anyway. I hate them now. Uh, I mean, I don't hate them. I'm not going to be a hater, but they scare the crap out of me. Don't look like that. Put on a coat or something. Right outside our door. We have uh, these spider webs like hanging out by the um, light. And I just, I haven't bothered with them. I, they don't care. They don't no, do to me. Never. And going out, but the other day we walked, we walked in and there was like, there's like four spiders and they're different spiders. They weren't like the same species in this web. And they're all walking around like, what? Do spiders live together on the is same it like web? A, is it like a, like a, what do they call that? I don't know. <laughs> Karma engine would manifest as that wish granting stone Gilligan found. Yes. You could take all kinds of episodes and somebody could be like a guest when they come in, you could earn those. And then somebody could be like Kurt Russell as jungle boy or, or uh, Phil Silvers as whatever characters he played. And remember when the mosquitoes uh, came to Gilligan's Island? Oh, totally the band? The mosquitoes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And then Ginger Marianne and uh, Mrs. Howell did a song. They had to be the, they were the, the, were they the honeybees? I think so. And their song was that. like buzz, buzz or something. It's buzz. Oh. <laughs> it's so horrible that I want to look that up. Oh. Um, we, could do a, we could do a whole episode on Gilligan's Island. The mosquitoes. <clears throat> Hell yeah, the mosquitoes. I can't believe I just said that. Um, <laughs> hell yeah, the mosquitoes. <laughs> yeah, I'm the bass player in mosquitoes. So, Stuart, how are we going to do this with the movies? Talk about how do you want to just like you just mentioned some of the, your favorite ones? Yeah, well, we got started with me. You know, I always love music. Music always takes me everywhere, and uh, and it was amazing. I, you know, when did the first Dragon's Lair come out? Too is that an eighty three? Or was that 84? Um, probably more like 83. I think it was. Okay, because one of the early. shows that came out in uh, 1982 was Secret of Nim, which was the last movie that he did before doing Dragon's Lair because it didn't do well at the theater. It's a great movie. It's an amazing movie. There's probably millions, you know, millions of people watching this show right now. Of the millions are watching us right now the that million. are ready to hit subscribe. 
Um, Dragon's Lair came out. In, most of them probably saw Secret of Nim in '83. Yeah. Okay. Wait, what movie are you talking about? Because no, Secret of Nim. Really? Is this what you're talking about, Anthem? Is that what you're just talking about, Stuart? What? Anthony said that Nim. movie was so good. I said I didn't know which movie you was talking about. Yeah, Secret of Nim. Another 1982 movie I haven't seen. Yeah, dude, I own it. Let's get together. Let's get together. So let's see. So that was 83. The the thing. The game. So what do you think your favorite movie from this year? Well, let me tell you. This was a year of m massive sequels, all throughout. There was a massive sequel. Uh, there was at least three movie. It depends on if you call Grease 2 a movie, a music movie. It was a musical. So I'm not saying that. So just off but, the top of Airplane 2. Didn't see it. Yeah. Airplane saw 2. The, saw the first one. Amityville 2. Didn't see it. I did yep. see the first one, though. And then right. uh, you said Grease 2. Didn't see that. Grease 2. There was I What's Your Favorite one. that you saw. What of that year? Yeah, uh, the whole year. Um, oh, yeah, one of the two movies Rocky that three. you saw. Rocky yeah. three. Rocky three. I just yeah. watched all three fight scenes. Oh, did you? Because I watched uh, Thunder Lips, and then I watched the uh, Rocky three. So interesting because it's completely structured differently than the first two movies. First two movies were storyline, um, training, fight. This was Rocket Three was storyline fight with Thunderlips, storyline uh, fight with uh, Clubber Lang, and he loses in the second round. That's that's the shortest. That was the shortest uh, match ever in Rocky. Interesting. The first two movies they went fifteen rounds. They went the distance. Yes. So then, uh, then there was a training, and then a third fight, the second with Clubber Lang. And that one only went three rounds. Wow. Which is crazy because, like I said, they've always, they have always went 15 rounds. Right. But uh, I like it because the first round, Rocky comes out in the, in the final fight, and he's beating the hell out of Clubber Lang. And the second round, Clubber Lang gets the better of him. And then, you know, Rocky wins in the uh, third round. But I think it was the I think it was the end of the first round was my favorite part of the whole movie where – Rocky, he's he's getting, he's uh, I don't know, maybe it was, man, I can't remember if it was the end of the first or second, but he's uh, taking some hits at the end, yeah, and he's getting hit in the head. He's like kind of covering up, and he comes back out, and he's like, "You ain't that bad," and he covers up. He keeps saying that. He goes, "You ain't that bad," and then he, he takes his glove, puts it right on the clubber line's face, just pushes him away, and says, "You ain't nothing." <laughs> ain't nothing. And then and then the music starts, and he's like, "All right." You know, Rocky, he's got it now. The music's on. <laughs> Once the music plays, it's all over for the other guy. <laughs> Bob Conte uh, takes over. You're and then, it. And then, you know, the, the final round, the third round, I always like it too when uh, – so the music starts. <laughs> you know, Rocky's he's finally turned it around. And then they always have it at the end where he uh, – there's a particular punch where he punches Clubber Lang – and the music, it's like a crescendo. It's like, bah! and it, it does that like three or four times as Rocky's just punching him. You're like, this is it. He's going to lay him out here any second now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mr. Oh, T was Bill great. Bill Conti right? is what I meant to say. Bill Conti is who did those. Yeah. Yeah. Tron and Rambo. First Blood. Thank you. Yes. First Blood. What a great. I mean, that's crazy that he was, like, huge, you know? Oh, wow, he put out Rocky Three and Rambo in the same year? Yes. Jeez, who does? Yeah, and I remember that, too, because, uh, you know, cable, we were huge on new on cable. Um, as I think we started with cable in, like, 1980, maybe 79, with Cineview was the name of the movie channel that we watched was Cineview. I don't think we got it. Well, we may have gotten an 80. Was there 80, 81, 82, somewhere right around there? Yeah. Because I was like, first blood, you know, and, and then I always loved the the little magazines. 
you know, you get for HBO and I'm looking through going, well, yeah. At first they were just this big, like the size of a TV guide. And then they got to be this big and they were sideways and long. And yeah, I know um, when we got cable, it came with remote control and it was this like brown box with those uh, mm -hmm. membrane buttons. Mm -hmm. And it had a cable that went all the way from there to the cable box. It was just so, you think about it now, it's just so ridiculous. You move that thing around. Yeah. Um, it may be ridiculous, but you know, I. Back then, I came home from school and we had it, and I was like, this is the greatest yeah. thing of all time. Oh. All these panels we have. And I have a remote control. Right. I think, the they, I think they put ours in on a Saturday because I remember being there and I was like, what? And then we had Continental Cable and they would give us every month, they would mail us a book. And it was pretty much all the shows, all the movies that were on. Yes. Yeah. And then, uh, then was, yeah. So, yeah, I remember, I'll never forget, you know, back in the day, it was just, it was such a new thing that they, they didn't, they didn't spend a lot of money on the books at first, you know? So when you got Cineview, it was like the old, um, uh, <laughs> Columbia house oh. books where there was no color except for a solitary color over the top of black and white. You know what I'm saying? So I remember seeing, I remember the sin of you book with uh, um, the spy who loved me with Roger Moore on the cover and it was black and white. And then they had a purple uh, over the top of it, much like the purple that's right there on our, on our thumbnail. Um, it's pinkish purple, but yeah, I will never forget. It's still in my brain seeing that, but Lance, Lance Jennings you know, is here. everything black and white. So it was really cheap, you know, cause it was brand new. Hey, it was weird about the cable companies. Then we, they actually came by house to house. They had a representative. So this mm -hmm. guy came to our house. He came in, he showed us all the channels. He showed us like the, the remote. Yeah. I mean, he was sitting there in the house showing us all this, trying to sell it. I'm thinking, man, that's just the thing. That's just craziness. Uh, to think that of something like that happening today. I mean, can you imagine Spectrum, someone coming to your house? The, Let me show you all everything we have. Yeah. I mean, you know, they do that. I mean, to a certain, well, they were doing that for a, a certain, you know, they have the people that walk around your, they'll just kind of creep on your neighborhood and then just knock on your door and they're like, hey, we're from, uh, and you're like, no, go away. Of course, now it's like, I don't, I'm not answering the door for anybody. No. But back then, it's like, hey, hello, who are you? <laughs> There's one thing, I, there's there's one of those things that I no, do like about COVID. It's I don't have a lot of people showing up at the door. <laughs> now someone knocks on your door and it's like, I'm not getting killed. I'm not answering that door. Not, I love, that's where I love Jim Gaffigan talking about <laughs> delivery. We treat it more like a hostage situation. All right, all right. I'll hand you the money. You hand me the food. I need you case in the joint. Oh, and speaking of, we have, today we have our... Popcorn. I had to bring popcorn to our movie discussion. Ooh. You want some? I would throw one at the screen. Okay, here you go. <laughs> Did you get it? I missed it. Well, uh, Dang it. Is it delicious? Got it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ever stick your tongue out at me again. Hey, what's up, Lance? Lance is out there along with Anthem. Before cable in Los Angeles, there were subscription TV channels like On TV and Select TV. Wow. Or I don't remember that here. I don't either. At all. Of course, I wasn't in some, I wasn't in a big city area. You know, like Chicago, they had those cool stations, you know, and then eventually we got those. Like when we got cable, we got WGN and stuff like that. Now I got to find that popcorn I threw before you just missed the chihuahua entry does does your dog like what's your dog's name perry like perry of course i'll never forget it because do you want to know something my dad is the one that turned me on to phineas and ferb yeah i was talking to my dad one night he calls me in fact i gotta call him back because he called me right before the show and i'm like i'll call you back and he he calls me one time this is years ago and he goes uh so what you doing and then he goes, oh, wait, I should have said, what you doing? I was like, 
what are you, who are you right now? He goes, you don't watch Phineas and Ferb. I'm like, what are you talking about? And he's like, it's a show on Disney. I really like it. I'm like, dad, that was, a, so I that love was that a, show. That was a really good show. He goes, there's a character. She always comes over whenever they're doing something. And she goes, what you doing? <laughs> so, um, <laughs> delivery is here. Delivery here is you pay now over the phone or no food. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what was I, uh, then, you know, they were competing. The two movie franchises were competing and Halloween three came out in 82 and Friday the 13th part three, the difference, um, Friday the 13th still was about Jason and Halloween had nothing to do with Michael Myers. Wow. Part three in 82. Yeah. I didn't realize they started in the seventies. That's me too. That's what hard, that Halloween wow. started it. And then it was Halloween three. The first one was what? 78. I, thought it was, I was thinking it was 70. I thought it was 79. Uh, Lance, I'm uh, on that link I sent. I'm just, we're not really going through uh, movie by movie. We're just kind of bouncing around. Um, yeah. Whatever you guys in the chat want to talk about, let me know. We'll, uh, yeah. Stuart's yeah. probably if want... seen it if you mentioned a movie. I yeah. Doubt I have. Yeah. I've actually seen a few, uh, maybe five movies from this year. One of the greatest sequels of all, especially sci fi times, because. J.J. Abrams had to redo it again the opposite direction when he did his Star Trek movies with Star Trek 2. The Wrath of God. Wrath of God. God! I like, uh, I like Star Trek. Yeah. Now you've seen that, haven't you? Haven't you seen Wrath yeah, of God? I've seen okay. I've seen most of the Star Trek movies. I'm not going to say I've seen them all, but I've seen most of them. Um, yeah, five was that's one of my favorite little scenes on Big Bang Theory is when they're talking about Star Trek Five. Oh yeah, I miss that show. I know. Hey, they have listed the toy. I thought that was the one with uh, Robin Williams. Which one? The toy. Oh, the toy. No, that. Uh, what was that? He did something with toy in the name. I thought. Yeah, he was the toy guy. This is Jackie Gleason, Richard and Pryor, Richard Pryor, yeah, and Ned Beatty. Yeah, yeah, Ned Beatty. Yeah. What was the what was the, the Robin Williams? He was toy? in Toy uh, with the uh, Robin Williams Toy. That's all you got to put in. Well, here Anthony thinks it's just Toy. Really? Toys. Oh, toys. Yep. Okay, the Robin Williams film was. What year is that? That was later, ninety two. Oh wow! Ten years later. <clears throat> The toy to toys. Ten years. That's how long it takes to put an S on the end and take the the off. Ten years. Well worth it. <laughs> oh, well worth it. Oh, now here's a movie I've seen. I didn't realize this was 82. Night Shift. Oh. I love that movie. Still my favorite scene is, when we just talked about this, Michael Keaton at the blackboard rewrites prostitution. Cross, don't he know what breaks that it is. down. <laughs> Shun. Tit. I think we all know what that is. Yeah. Two, two tits. <laughs> then finally, shun from the push Latin away. to shun, to push away, to say no. Oh, it don't was... get no better than that. And then that's where it originally, isn't that where, isn't that where he's like, no, I'm not going to say it because I don't think that's right. But look at this cat. It is. It is. Well, who who directed that film? Ron Howard. Yeah, and his brother was in it. Ron Howard directed Henry Winkler, Michael Keaton, and Shelley Long. That's quite the cast right there. Who made their debut in that movie? Debut? I don't know. He was a frat boy. You people are partying in a morgue. Oh, I don't remember who that was. See if anybody out there knows. Tell us. Can anybody out there? I don't want to have to tell you. Somebody else out there might know. Yes, Dark Crystal and Conan the Mar the Marbarian. 
Conan the Marbarian. No, Conan the Barbarian. Marbs has nothing to do with it. Although that is my part of my friend's um, silly name. So yeah, two movies. I, yeah, I loved them. That was great. That was were great. Dark movies, I own. Uh, I own both. I own both. Two movies I haven't seen. Yeah, we're gonna have to get together on this eighty-two thing, bro. We'll just we'll watch a movie and then we'll just play some games. This is my, one of my wife's favorite movies. Um, is Savannah this the, smiles. Is this the one where the little girl's kidnapped? I did not see it. That oh, was 82? A movie I saw that you haven't seen. No, this is... This is something else. <laughs> this is something else. So another another uh, really cool movie that, speaking of cable, I caught it on cable. I did not know about this movie until it was on cable. Gary Busey <clears throat> and who else? Willie Nelson. Can you believe it? From 82? I own it. I own it. It's over there. Uh, What's it called? Over there. Barbarossa. Barbarossa. I really, really liked it. Never heard of it. Yeah. Yeah. I bought it for my father in law. So now, and then I've subsequently um, huh. inherited that. So, yeah, Barbarossa. So, real quick, Savannah Smiles. It's actually a pretty decent movie. Uh, Cecilia loves it. It's one of her favorites from, I guess, her childhood. It's about a little girl whose parents aren't paying attention to her. She ends up running away. Uh, I think she climbs into the back of someone's car and ends up being two convicts and they drive away with her. So she, they end up being wanted, I guess, for kidnapping, but it, they were actually, even though they were convicts, they were actually decent guys. They That's because they we all, the, deep, deep down, we all good. Yeah, they took care of the little kid. It, it's actually kind of a cool movie. Yeah, I remember that now. That must have been, that was like, uh, do you know when or? that was? 82. That was 82, Savannah mm -hmm. Smile. Okay, that's cool. Awesome. Relic Gamer, how's it going? Relic Gamer, can have you heard my my uh, trivia question? Oh, yeah, go ahead and say that again. Who got, who, who had their debut in the movie Night Shift as a frat brother that was partying in the morgue? But remember the one line? Hey, kid, do you like music? Yeah. <laughs> How great was that? I don't know who that is, and I've seen that movie more than once. I mean, and 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 when they're partying, he's like right in the middle, right down the middle. You know what's weird is when you watch a movie that say you watched two or three times a long time ago, maybe mm -hmm. 10, 10, 20 years, and you rewatch it, mm -hmm. and you realize that somebody really famous was in that movie who had a small role. You're like, yes, I didn't know they were in this movie. Cliff Clavin, where did do you remember one of the first movies he was in? I've never seen him in a movie other than uh, the Toy Story stuff. Yeah, he was in Superman. The first, the very first one. Yeah, he was in the uh, he was in the installation where they shot the rocket, shot a rocket. Yeah. All right, yeah. Stuart, do, do you like ET? I don't know. Here's the weird thing. ET is always considered like a, a classic. Everyone loves it. Um, I never saw it as a kid. I wonder if that matters, because as an adult, I was watching it with my niece and nephew, you know, Terrence Sean. Yeah. And they were, I don't know, around 10, maybe like 10 and 7 or 10 and 6, whatever. And uh, I was watching it, and man, I was like, I just don't get it. It was really weird. I, I just didn't like it. Yeah. That, but then I, don't I talked to, he's like, oh, I love that movie. It's like, maybe I, maybe I watched it wrong. <laughs> I don't That's know. But I, was, I was asking my wife. I was like, "Do you think maybe there's some... your there's your clue? Relic Gamer gave you the clue. Oh, Kevin Bacon? Nope. Kevin Costner. Bingo. Nice job, Relic Gamer. Very good. Yeah, yeah that or he was just talking to his friend Kevin. <laughs> He's, hey, Kevin, I got something to say. Wait, I meant to send that to Kevin. Yeah, I don't know. I just didn't. Uh, yeah, I just couldn't get into it. No, I I couldn't either. I w it wasn't it wasn't. There was, in there was a scene. I guess it was sad. My niece and nephew were crying. Oh, I'm looking, I'm looking around like, 
Am I Did the I miss only one? Am I the only one that doesn't care right now? I am a cold-hearted bastard. <laughs> That's what it felt like. <laughs> like a monster. Like they're crying. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh my God, how much longer is this movie going to go? <laughs> Get your ass home. Oh wow, Richard Belzer. I forgot. Oh about yeah, that. Richard Belzer. Yeah. Yes, he was the he was the thug in that. Yeah. Um so are there so any I think, I think we've mentioned all of the the sequels that happened that year. There were three movies that came out with that were uh music movies. Um and you know, I was just looking through here earlier. Oh, you know another great while I'm looking, um Another great movie that came out that year was um, Beastmaster. You never saw Beastmaster or Blade Runner was another one too. Huge Blade Runner. Huge, huge, huge. Um, Did not. But um, David Bowie with uh, Cat People came out that year too. Um, what was the other one that came out? What was this music one? Creep Show came out that year. From Stephen King's comic book style um, book, um, so I guess Queen Grease put out their Grease. live from Montreal came out that year. I guess Grease Two was still a musical. Grease Two, yeah, that's more of a musical. What a weird piece of crap that was too. That they just I, they took a great thing and just took a piss because. All of a sudden, you've got Michelle Pfeiffer on a ladder singing like a Pat Benatar tune. I'm like, what in the hell's going on? All of a sudden, the doo-wop is gone. It's like the next year or whatever. It's like the next year, and they're like doo-wopping one show, and the next show, they're... I don't really care about musicals, but I actually like Grease. I thought that was really good. That's a brilliant movie. I mean, and, brilliant. And, I mean, I liked it, and I don't like musicals, so to keep my attention, that was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Hey, it's Blade Runner. Uh, that's a stupid question, but was it was this the movie? Was this a series, or was it another series that came out about five years ago? Which one? Sorry, there was a Blade Runner. Was there a new version that came out a few years ago? Yes. In fact, in Is that fact, the playing a guitar on the front of something, some kind of big machine, or going around. Yes, I'm a little vague on the new. You mean in the new one? The new one. Yeah, I'm a little vague on it. I saw it, and I was not uber impressed. I saw that one, and I didn't like it that much. But you saw the first one first. No, I haven't seen the first one. You are kidding me. I've only seen okay. the last one. Okay, this is what throws me. But you knew there was another one, right? Well, I, I've known about Blade Runner. I mean, I've heard all about it. It just right, right. Oh, wait, now, Mad Max. Yeah, like Mad Max. Now that was the new one, Fury Road, right? Yes. Okay. That was awesome. That was very well done. Very well done. Of course, the first Mad Max was great. Road Warrior was still pretty good. I just could not get. I do not dig wasteland films. Where it's just some vast wasteland and things are slowly moving along. These are the movies that take like, because in order to create these wasteland movies, the budget is so high. So they have to like, uh, even, even something like Hellboy 2. Okay. Didn't like Hellboy 2. Um, they had a scene where they have to show this big abyss, right? And the camera's like panning and panning. And I'm like, could you just stop? I realized Billy spent a lot of time creating this whole scene and you want to make it worth your, what you paid him to do it. But good God, you're lost. You just lost me. It just lost me as I'm staring down the butthole of your movie. <laughs> there you go. All right, Anthony, That's we'll see you. That's how I feel. Um, did you um, see Porky's? Yeah. Porky's. Um, I think I've seen, I, I've definitely watched parts of it. I know that. I remember different scenes of the uh, the gym teacher, that old lady. So I do yeah. remember. Part of, you know what's interesting? My, my dad really liked Porky's. Oh, yeah. That's a, that's a less film. Doesn't seem less like he, more. I, I didn't think he would, but he liked that one. Yeah. Well, you got to remember, 1982, 
1982, we had seen Star Wars. 19, uh, uh, we had already seen Star Wars. And then we saw the um, Empire Strikes Back. And we were waiting for the next year when the Return of the Jedi came back. So there was a lot that had to happen this year before Star Wars came out. Because they knew, you know, if you're going to... Why are you going to put out a movie in 83? Because Stewart's graduating? I mean, I don't know. What's the, you know, because you're going to get kicked right in the face by Star Wars. Everything is going to get trounced. Wait, did you graduate college in 83? Nope, high school. High school? Oh, no. that's right. High school. I'm right. not that old. I couldn't remember. Although it doesn't show right here. Um, Let's see what I got on the. Let's see. Oh, that's right. A young Kim Cattrall was on in Porky's, huh? Yeah. Ooh. Interesting. See, that's like those movies. I, if I watch it today, I'd be like, "Hey, <laughs> she's famous." I don't remember her, but in this movie, right? Well, I think we're right. skipping over the big movie of the year, Zapped, with Scott Bale and Willie Ames. Yeah, that was like that. Really got screwed when it came to the uh, Academy Awards. I think it really should have been. <laughs> I have, no, I have no idea what that even. What, what was it about? What was it about? Yeah. It was about some weird situation where Scott Bayo got <clears throat> zapped. I can't remember if it was something in school. It is not one of my favorite films, and not something that I watched. Like I can remember another great film that came out that year, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. I remember that because I remember the pool scene. And uh, anyway, so. Um, but he got zapped somehow, and then he had powers to, you know, huh, do different things. So there's a movie from 82, I'm just looking at it, called Time oh. Walker. And it says yeah. it generally received negative reviews, and it was an episode of Mystery Science Theater. <gasps> Time Walker was? Yeah. Is it Time Walker or Time Rider? Walker. Really? This movie. Hold there on. might be a time writer as well, but there is a time writer, but I don't even see Time Walker. What do it show me again? What's that? Did you show? Oh, I thought you had a picture of it. Oh no! Uh, you know what? Can I... Time Walker. Here's a. <laughs> oh, wow! Here's I, the poster. Uh... I've never heard of it. Who's in it? Um, let's go back. Ooh, <laughs> hello. What just happened there? Um, go back here. I'll, I'll see it real quick. Time. Time Walker. Ben Murphy, Nina Axelrod, Kevin. Whatever. On the cast, all it says on Wikipedia here, like for the main cat, it says James Karen. I've never heard of that guy. Who is that? Uh, this says stars Ben Murphy, Nina Axelrod, Kevin Brophy. That's, I don't think I've ever heard it's of it. Directed by Tom Kennedy. Now, <laughs> huh, how's this for a last name? Random. <laughs> Robert Random. <laughs> That's a great name. Robbie I am, Random. I am just a random Robert. So that movie is directed by Tim or Tom Kennedy. Tom yes. Kennedy was, uh, I'm sure it's not the same guy, but there was a Tom Kennedy who was a really well-known uh, uh, game show host back in the 70s and 80s. Yeah, you're right. I remember that. Mega Mike. Hey, Mike, are you new? I don't think I've seen you in here before. Welcome. I love your uh, love your little logo there. That's awesome. Oh, sweet. Very cool. All right, all right. Yeah, Rutger Hauer was awesome in Blade Runner. He was awesome in a lot of those films, you know, back in the day. And he was um, he was in he was a uh, wasn't he a he had a resurgence recently where he was in something else. Um, but he was huge back in the day, huge, 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 hoogie. Oh, Swamp uh, Thing was from 82. Did you know that? Yes. Yes. With Adrian Barbeau. Yeah. Now, uh, okay. No, that was going to be later. Uh, Tootsie was huge. Remember, do you never, 
You never saw that, huh? No, I did. Uh, I think I did see that one. Um, and uh, let's see what else. Whoops. World according to Garp. Speaking of Robin Williams, that was out that year. Uh, really? The Year of Living Dangerously came I out. I think I did see World According to Garp. You know what's weird? Some of these movies I have seen, but it's so long ago. Like I don't remember if I liked the movie. Yeah, right. Well, and I can tell you that <laughs> World According to Garp, I wasn't really into it, but it was based on a book that I ended up getting a few of that that author's books. Um, uh, let's see. I'm trying to remember. There was something else that I saw that really jumped out. Well, of course. So you had Halloween, right? Halloween 3 came out, which was not. I don't think that was a Carpenter. But speaking of Carpenter, that year, The Thing with Kurt Russell. Uh, uh, amazing science fiction movie. Stands up still today. All right. I'm going to have to watch that. I may have seen that one. Yeah. Look at here uh, for Halloween 3. John Carpenter produced it, but he did not direct it. Yeah, right. So he had a hand in it, but... Uh, yeah, still his franchise, I think, is what it was. I don't... I think... I know I definitely saw Halloween 1. Mm -hmm. I saw the last one. You never saw 2? I don't know. I may have. Two. But two one I remember... Good. Actually, I just watched one... It's really weird. But I watched it when it came out originally. Uh huh. My grandma. Yeah. And now my mom's watching, so it was grandma, my grandma on my dad's side. She took me to go see Halloween when it came out. And when did that movie come out? Seventy eight. I or think it was. 80. Was it seventy eight? I thought it was. Uh, I thought it was seventy nine, but I could be wrong. I got um, it up now. 78. I was 10. 78. I was 10 and I saw that movie. Wow. I can't believe I, you. Who took you? Your mom? No, no. My grandma, Sally. Your, oh, your grandma, Sally. I don't, in all fairness, I don't think she had any idea what it was. I think she no. thought it was, a, I think she thought it was a, a fun Halloween movie. Like, I don't think she paid attention. Of course, back then, too, you really didn't know, unless you're really in the movies, and you're checking, you're reading the newspaper or whatever, you don't know what the hell those things are. No, but no. I do know it scared the hell out of me when I saw it. <laughs> I would have mad scared the oh. crap out of me. God, we watched it. Uh, oh. Sly and I watched about a year ago. And as I'm watching, I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I saw this when I was 10 years old. Yeah, it's still a great movie. What oh, I always yeah, loved, it's though, really creepy. What I always so do you own it or did you just watch it on something? No, we just watched it because we watched okay. the, the newest version, I think, first. Okay. And I was like, you know what? I want to watch. I'm going to go back and watch the original one again because it's been so okay. long. Because this is, this is one of those conscious thoughts, you know, that directors have and the things that they do in movies in order to keep you and I uh, involved in the movie. Um, I, I'd love to ask you what happened, but I know that you're, 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 that's not where your head is, and you're not going to remember. With what? But when you next time you watch it, okay. So, so Jamie Lee Curtis is painted as the goody goody two shoes, up to the neck, you know, no, you know, whatever. But we all know truly how sexy she is, anyway. You know, uh, she's a beautiful woman, and um, and so then what happened was what would happen was they had. All the two other girls that were like the hotties that were, you know, sleeping around with their boyfriends and uh, end up dying in the house. Um, See, they died. It was the show. Be a good girl. Be a good girl. Keep your wits about you. Um, what happened as soon as those two were dead and out of the movie? Her her blouse is unbuttoned to about here. And her hair is done differently. And it's really amazing. Also, pay attention to the neighborhoods when you watch it next time. Because it's really weird. It's really weird how they do that. That They're driving later to go babysit at a place that they just walked from earlier. I mean, everybody kind of lives in the same area. 
Have you seen this? <laughs> this is so funny. <laughs> is priceless oh my god you're dead <laughs> it's chase <laughs> oh whoa get out of here this is my kill <laughs> Oh my lord. <laughs> <laughs> Going down a slide. Oh. And they and they shot that, you know, they shot that like in the summertime. So they had to have they had to have leaves brought in to have blown across the road. That's why there's so many you know, there's so the, the leaf blowing is so predominant in that movie. Because they were just trying to really play off its yeah, fall. Here I are like, leaves. I like that part because I love fall. So, yeah, me too. So, so fall movies I'm, or any kind of a movie where it's raining and storming for most of the movie, I love that stuff. Really? Yeah, that br brings me in. Really? So hey, singing in the rain. Pete is in the house. Papa. All right, Pete. What is what's uh, what are some of your favorite movies from '82? Let's hear it. That was a great era for movies, even though there was a lot of crap. Now let's talk about crap, shall we? Okay, a movie that came out that year is is also tied into what I have been saying for decades. Is one of the most underrated rock pop records of all time and especially of that year so if if you people haven't heard of this album you've got to do yourself a favor stay away from the movie unless you're just real unless jeff you and i want to if we want a mystery science theater this movie one day <laughs> let's do it um barry bostwick is in it and then the dude that was in like everything at that time, Michael Bine, my, no, my, not Michael Bine. Yeah, is that isn't that his name? He was in Warriors. He was in Xanadu. He was in Mega Force. Is the movie I'm talking about? 1982 Mega Force with Barry Bostwick. It's a horrible movie, and that's I hate to say that, but it was a horrible movie. But the soundtrack music and the title song are all now on a remastered version of Megaforce, the album by the band 707. Wow. All right, so I'll all the music in that movie was 707. And, oh, my God, what a great record. If you have never heard that and you like, and you like the rock pop of 1982 – that era listen to it it's out on youtube check it out do yourself a favor i'll look that up yeah see papa pete megaforce horrible movie good god it was a horrible movie um I, clash of the titans not 1982 no i love clash of the titans yeah i love that even though, I mean, it's really hokey when you watch it now. Make it four said it was a 2600 game. I don't remember that. What? <laughs> You're kidding me, Pete. You're kidding me. You know what? You know what Atari game I have for, uh, at least I had, I don't know if I still have it, for, um, it was made by 20th Century Fox. I had oh. MASH. What? Yeah. I, you know, when you open the box, it was, I think it was a pretty big box because it had a t shirt in it, had a MASH t shirt. And if I remember right, there's different like mini games to play, and one's a surgery game. It was actually kind of interesting. I was shocked, and it came with a shirt, which is bizarre. That's not a family show. I mean, their theme song is "Suicide Is Painless." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those decisions they don't make sense. You're like, okay, so okay, let's do a mash. <laughs> Mash is huge right now and it's wrapping up. Let's make a video game for families. You're right. On the Atari. 
It was probably wrapping up, wasn't it? God, my oh. brother couldn't stand that show because he didn't like blood. And there was that one scene where they're working on a guy and he goes. <laughs> oh, I loved MASH the first, what, two years when Henry Blake was on there and Trapper John. Those episodes are hilarious. They are hilarious. So, Ralph Gamer asked a while back, have we seen Forbidden World? And I have not. And I looked it up. and it, I mean, it's from 82, but when you look at it, like yeah, the poster it looks for it. Looks old. It looks like a 1950s film, which is really cool. Yes. Yeah. Let me, let me put it on here. Look at this. Yeah, look at that. Isn't that cool? Hey, is that this? Oh, wait, what is that thing? I thought it was a spider at first, but look, it's got like bat wings or something. Oh, yeah, that are coming down. Like going up. Like oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right, right, right. What the heck is that thing? Oh, I know it's, what it is. It's part alien, part human. An all nightmare. An all nightmare. I'm your worst nightmare. So, Relic Gamer, is this is this good? I've never. I remember seeing it on the list, and I'm like, yeah, I've never seen that. The name and the poster looks like right out of the 50s. Huh. <laughs> Six pack with Kenny Rogers. Aaron Gray. Oh gosh, she's. I had a big crush on Aaron Gray. And I own the Buck Rogers show. Thanks for mentioning that, Lance. I'm going to make sure I get that out. So That's Forbidden right. World looks pretty good. It got, it got a few awards here. That's not bad. I might have to check that out. Yeah, no doubt. You know what's weird is I love sci-fi, but there's, there's very few sci-fi movies I'm really into. I don't know. Well, why. you're really, I mean... Uh, what was I going to say? What was, I forgot Re Wes Craven did Swamp Thing. Oh, yeah. Swamp I, I don't know how I forgot about that. Well, there's a Clint Eastwood movie, Firefox. Uh-huh, Firefox. I own it on Laserdisc and DVD. Yeah. And he was in another movie. Uh, he had another movie that year. Um, shoot. What the heck? I just saw it earlier. Yeah, Richard Pryor had his live on Sunset Strip that year. That was huge on cable later. Um, oh, my God, the pirate movie with Christopher Atkins and Christy McNichol. I don't yeah, Pink Floyd had the wall came out that year. Uh, that was one of the other music ones. ones. Look at Papa Pete. Mentioned MASH, and he shows a picture of it right off the bat. Oh, and Megaforce. Oh, my God. Straight out of the Papa Pete collection. That is crazy. Wait a minute. Porky's is an Edgar Rice Burrow story? I'm just kidding. Which one is it? <laughs> the thing is... Wait, what? Which... What is an Edgar Rice? You know who... You know what he wrote, right? Edgar he Rice Burrow? right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is a timeless classic. Beat. Yeah. Yeah. What was the Edgar Rice Burroughs story? Yeah, Officer and a Gentleman was big that year, but I never, you know, I don't know that I ever watched it. That wasn't my kind of flick. And of course, the bodacious set of tatas. My favorite year with Peter O'Toole was out that year. Look, I ought to call Monkey pictures. Grip. Walter Matthau and Margaret. Boy, that's a. What was that? I ought to be in pictures. Oh, I don't remember that one. The Last Unicorn, one of the. one I, I don't know. I think that's probably one of the biggest, one of the first big anime shows that, that came out. Uh, Lance, you hit. Yeah. You got me on this one here. Cheers is one of my all-time favorite shows. Oh, I just oh. love that show. That did start in 82. Nice yeah. job. Wow. Oh, yeah. It was... Uh... So so here's a big story about Cheers, since it started in 82. I, uh, I, my family was a big fan of Master of Disguise. Did you guys watch that? Mm -mm. No, you never saw that with Dana Carvey? Mm -mm. No? Oh my God, you've got to see it. So 
I'm talking about it at, at church band practice. The pastor's wife is talking about it. our band leader. She's talking about how they love it. And so she's like, well, I've, my friend Sel is like, I've never seen it. I'm like, you got to watch it. Here, bar, use my, here's my copy. Check it out. Family checks it out. At that time, her oldest was watching Cheers religiously. She was checking out the reruns every night. And that night, they watched that movie instead. And they got to the end, and her her golden line was, I miss Cheers for this? I'm like, ow. Yeah. That's so bad. <laughs> last, year, that. last year, I went and uh, watched... Cheers from the beginning all the way through the end on, uh, I guess it's Netflix. Okay. And uh, I watched it and it was, it was just as good as I remembered it, which I'm glad. Right. I love when you, when that happens, when you go watch a show and it's just, actually I had, uh, I had my son, let's see, I think Christian watched a lot of them with me. That was, uh, yeah. Well, when that show went off there, that's, that sucked. Yeah. Yeah. I I didn't want to go. A lot of people say once Dan left, it was terrible, but the, there was actually a lot of classic lines after that happened. Remember when <laughs> Frazier was trying to hypnotize Woody and he's do, has watch out like this and Woody goes, get that watch on my face, old man. And he just pushes him. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little known fact. Uh, Oh, wow. I need to, oh I, yeah, I watched all of Frasier too. I enjoyed all of Frasier too. What's weird is I I've seen Frasier, but I haven't watched it. Um, I don't even know if I've seen a full season. I've watched it here and there, and I love the character Frasier. I just I, I should probably watch that because I think you need to because yeah. um, Cheers lasted ten seasons, right? I think Frasier went eleven, didn't it? Frasier went eleven, yeah. And Frasier started, I believe, the year after Cheers. So, um, um, what's the guy's name that plays him? Plays um, something with Graham. Yeah. Oh, what's his name? Uh, I, I hate that. See, these are the moments that I'm talking about. Well, these are the moments I'm talking about when everybody out there knows exactly who we're talking about. They know the name. Yeah, and who then, played Frazier? I can't believe I can't remember his name. But of uh, 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 something like, like Graham, wasn't it? like uh, uh, if only there was a way to know. That's so stupid. I don't even want to look, but I know I'm Kelsey have to. Grammar. There you go. Kelsey Grammar. <laughs> There's your Graham. So, and I think Fraser started the year after Cheers. So if so, that means he played the same character for twenty one years in a row. But I'll tell you, isn't that incredible? He was so he was so popular. He was doing so many other things too. You know. Oh yeah. Like he, he was in Pocahontas and. But there's not many people that could say they played the same character for twenty one years straight. I know. That's especially over two two shows. And then he played the Beast. <laughs> Lance Jacks, that's, that's my favorite episodes. So the people at Cheers were telling uh, Cliff, you know, how obnoxious he can be. So he went and he was talking to some guy and he hooked him up to some electro electrodes. And the guy had a buzzer with him. And so whenever and he was like hiding in the bar, whenever Cliff would say something stupid or obnoxious, the guy would press the buzzer and get a shock. Well, <laughs> wait, I think this is when Rebecca Howe was on. So I think it was her. Maybe it was some other woman. I don't know. But she walks by the guy with the buzzer and he just like follows her like this and he hits the button by mistake. Like, I guess he got all excited. And he just hit the button and he zaps freight, uh, <laughs> Cliff. And he's like, What's that for? <laughs> oh, oh, and at the very end, this is the best part of the whole show. At the very end, he's, he's being zapped over and over and over. And he's like, Who's got the, who's got the zapper? And Al, remember the old guy that sat across the bar? Yeah. He had a line like every six, seven episodes. He had the buzzer out like this, and he's zapping him. And he goes, dance, mailman, dance. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> oh, yeah. Kelsey Graham was Sideshow Bob. I forgot about that. Oh, my God. <sighs> oh, man. Yeah, I thought, you know, yeah, thank you, Lady yeah. Ventress. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. Lady Ventress has it. Look at that. 48 hours. That's what I'm talking about. Now, you asked so me if I saw it, and I said no. I'm trying to think. You saw Beverly Hills Cop, but this or is how did I describe it? Nick, what's that? How did I describe Beverly Hills Cop? Because I couldn't remember the name. Oh yeah, what did you say? I said it, I said I saw that movie with the banana and the tailpipe. The banana and the tailpipe. <laughs> I couldn't remember the name of it. I I liked that movie a lot. I thought it was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was. <laughs> uh, yeah, but forty eight hours, man. Um. It was great from front to back. It had some, you want to talk about, I don't even, I'm not even going to ruin them for you. Cause you know why we're going to watch it together. It has got some of the best one liners and best. Uh, you could pull so many what, is this little Eddie Murphy, sound clips. Nick out of that. Eddie, What's Murphy, that? Eddie Murphy, Nick Nolte. Yeah. Eddie Everybody Murphy, knows. Nick okay. Nolte. Did, did you see warriors? No. Oh, shit. There was a Dude. video game of that. Huh? There was a video game of Warriors. I know that. There was. And and we need to watch that movie. They actually put out a director's cut many <laughs> years later. Um, where they... Where you, <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Don't tell them all wait, of them. Wait, Don't tell them like, all of them. That reminds me of the, the one-liner in Ghostbusters that we're talking about. Did was you see... Uh, Oh, go ahead. Oh, that yeah, right. On a rant and he calls, is this true? And yes. he calls that guy dickless, and he keeps yeah. going on and on, and the guy says, is this true? Yeah. <laughs> and Bill Murray says, yes, it's true. This man has no dick. <laughs> you're just That's one of those moments where it just catches the whole audience because you're just sitting there going, what's he going to say? I, I saw that in the theaters, and I just thought that was one of the funniest lines I've ever heard in my life because it caught me so off guard because right. he's, he – called him dickless early on and then he talked for a lot longer so you forgot all about that if right. they would have ended it with dickless it wouldn't have been as funny <laughs> i'm trying to i'm trying to, oh you know what's really interesting too um two guys i was going to say about the warriors you know two guys <laughs> played predominant characters in 48 hours are were in warrior the warriors so we should watch the warriors then we should watch 48 hours but the you saw Predator, right? Wait a minute. Schwarzenegger, Predator in the jungle. Yeah, I think I think I did. Yeah. I can't say for sure I saw the whole thing, but I, I know I've seen some of it at least. Well, the guy who plays the Indian who can track, you know, he does the tracking. That guy's in 48 hours. Interesting. Yeah. But uh great, great great movie there's so many great scenes and you know even one for now for now with the way you know society is right now um eddie murphy walking into a well, i won't say it i won't say it i'm not, I'm not going to talk about it anymore it's worth it but we'll watch the warriors which must have been 1980 i think warriors must have been 80 you know what you know how what I used to use to do to help me pick a movie out at Blockbusters? No. If I saw a movie that looked good on the cover, right? I used to flip it around. First thing I do is I go right down the, you know, runtime. I was like, because if it's like, you know, if it's like two hours and fifteen minutes, I'm like, goes right back. <laughs> Hour thirty five. I'm like. Perfect. I'm all over it. You're like, if I'm going to get screwed, I'm not going to get screwed for over two hours. I'm going to get screwed for about a buck and a half or a buck 40. Yeah. So I'm not big on long movies, but you know what's weird? My favorite movie of all time is extremely long. I don't, it might be like three hours long. Uh, 2001 Space Odyssey. I'm sorry, Dave. I can't do that. You uh, know, <clears throat> they were saying stuff about that, about there's that scene where they're in the, you know, where they shut themselves in the capsule so that he doesn't hear them. Mm -hmm. He was reading, but lips. he can read lips. Yeah, he's no dummy. So, but um, there was something else though, where where that 
plays contrary to something else that happened in the movie. I can't remember. Anyway. But, um, I remember watching, it came on Channel 11 here in town on a Saturday, like after Mom Paul Kettle or something. Yeah. You know, and so I started watching. I was like, oh, I love space, love aliens. I'm going to watch this. Yeah. And for like the first 20 plus minutes, it's just, um, you know, monkeys b jumping around. And I'm like, I can't remember how I was really little. I was like, what is this? This is this is in space. So I just shut it off and I never paid attention again. And then I, I was working. Um, actually, I saw that movie, World of Credit Guard, one of the few. Um, but as I was, uh, when I was working second shift several years ago, <clears throat> it was, I don't know, it was probably after midnight we're sitting there working. Okay. And some guy started mentioning 2001 Space Odyssey. And he was saying how great it was. I said, you know what? I tried watching. I was a little kid, but I couldn't get past the whole monkey scene. He goes, oh, you're going to yeah. love it. So next day, he brings it to me. I ended up working late to like 2 in the morning. I go home, and DVDs were fairly new at the time. And he gave me Did a you watch it after 2 a.m.? So I put it in. I was like, let me just watch the beginning. And for some reason, now I'm captivated by the, the monkeys or the hominid or hominoids. Or whatever, the uh, monolith? Yeah, and then I saw the monolith. And I was like, oh, my gosh, what's happening here? And then the movie right. starts. I, I I didn't stop watching. I mean, what was the movie? Three hours or something? So it was like 5, 5.30 or something. When I get done watching it, and I'm fascinated by the whole thing. I just love because there was hardly any talking in the movie, which is bizarre. No. Yeah, it was very sparse. And I think most people don't like this movie because it's not a normal movie. It's there's right. no action, hardly any talking. Right. It's a head. It's a head trip. Two and a half hours. Oh god, it seemed way longer than that. <laughs> and then there was uh, the the crazy <laughs> ending. Um. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah. See, Pete doesn't like it. I love that movie. I could. I could watch it anytime. I just. The thought of an alien race coming here, planting, um, I don't know what you want to call it, almost like a, I guess like a time capsule on the moon, knowing that at some point, even though back when they did, they put one here and one on the moon, when they did it, we were still basically animals. And then to think that, you know, millions of years later or something, We'll have the technology. We'll be smart enough to get to the moon, and then we'll find that. And then when they find it, then of course it triggers back to them. Now they know we found it. That whole th the whole th thought of that is like, man, that is so cool. Right. Yeah, that's, that's some crazy stuff, man. Yeah, I was. You need to. Here's here's what I need to promote. Let's go back to music again. Then, do yourself a favor and check out the album by. Uh, it's called Space Metal, and it's by Star One, which is Arian Anthony Lucasen. And he put together a string of songs that are based around his favorite outer space movies. That's why it's called Space Metal, because it all takes place off of the Earth. So he did a song, he did a song about that. Um, and um, it's called uh, Star Child. And it's an amazing, amazing. The whole album is amazing. He did one about that. He did one about Star Trek Four. Uh, he did one about Star Wars. Um, he did one about Enemy Mine, Alien, uh, Outland. You ever see that movie, Outland? Mm -hmm. Not eighty two, but still amazing with Sean Sean Connery, and Peter Boyle was in it too. Anytime I hear Sean Connery's name, all I can think of is Saturday Night Live. <laughs> Damn you, Trebek. Schwartz. Schwartz for 500, please. Yeah, Pete, I watched uh, Eyes Wide Shut as well. That was another great Kubrick film. Yeah, I don't... I never watched it. I always wondered about how how true it was. Like, I was wondering if uh, Kubrick was writing from something he knew. Oh, yeah. Huh. I do remember hearing this. That's how they picked Hal's name. Wasn't Hal because they are the initials are ahead of IBM? Wasn't Hal wow. in the movie? Was he made in Peoria, Illinois? He was made somewhere in Illinois. I remember that. Really? Yeah. I don't so, know. I did finally. I've seen it once. I did watch it uh, probably 
Within the last five years, I watched it front to back. I'm like, look, I got to do it. I'm going to do it. So I love that movie. And then did I watched watch 2010. I did watch 2010. And I didn't like that one very much. Um, although I thought it was a decent movie. Okay. But it was a movie where it was, it was like a standard sci fi movie where 2001 was so different, so strange. Um, it just it was like a kind of a disconnect between the two. Yeah. And then uh, they never made, you know, there's two other books. There was 2001, 2010, 2056 or 2065, something like that, or 63. I always get it mixed up. And then there was uh, the fourth book was 3001. Wow. I wish they would have. Uh, I've read all those books. They're all fantastic. Do you remember who did the soundtrack for 2010? No. Partially. He didn't do the whole, I don't think he did the whole soundtrack. Andy Summers hmm. worked on that. He did like the theme tune uh, for it. And I loved it. Listen to it. Listen to it on YouTube. It's really cool. It's a lot of fun. You know, the, the music they had in 2001, the, uh, uh, the classical music, mm -hmm. that was a placeholder. And they actually paid someone to do um, um, the soundtrack for it. And it was all done. But they decided the the placeholder music they had just fit the movie better. So they went with that. But oh there's an entire soundtrack for 2001 that's already done. Uh, I'm sure you can find it somewhere and listen to it. I was going to say, is it available? Um, I don't know if it's available. I mean, you might well just be able to listen to it. I don't know if it's something you can buy. But um, I don't. I don't think they've ever, and that would be really cool. Well, I can't now because Kubrick's dead, but I would have right. loved to have seen the movie a second time, uh, you know, again with the other soundtrack in place. It would probably be really weird because, you know, the other stuff's such a so classic. Yeah, like watching Wizard of Oz with Dark Side of the Moon. Yes. <laughs> it makes sense. Oh, really? Roy Scheider and John Lithgow were in 2010. Oh, yeah. That's some big names in there. Wow. Like I said, it was a decent movie. I just, um, I was a little disappointed because, I don't know, having read the book and then having seen 2001, it just was so different. Right. And by the way, I know this jumps way back in our conversation. Honky Tonk Man was the other Clint Eastwood movie that came out that year. Oh, man. I think... Did I see that? I don't think I ever did. Um, he, you know, he played a musician. Oh, but here's one. Here's one. I want to know if... I want to know who remembers this one. This was a... Uh, see, it shows, it shows it as a movie in the theaters. I knew it from television. I think the night that it came on... I saw it on television, uh, thinking it was a television movie. John Ritter voiced one of the main characters. The other, speaking of MASH, the other voice was Harry Morgan. Um, it was the Flight of Dragons animated movie. Huh. Did anybody see that? I've never heard of it. It's about how magic used to exist in the world, but because of science and whatever... And our belief changing, it started to disappear. And so then, uh, so so then, uh, John Ritter's character, I think, is a mathematician. And so he, it's about how they start to remerge worlds. It, 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 he, he steps over. But yeah, wow, Flight of Dragons. Yeah, 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 yeah. Check it out. It's really cool. And then there's an, you know, it's kind of Lord of the Ringish, where there was multiple leaders of good sides. Everybody was cool, but this asshole over here, hmm. right? So that's who they have to, that's who they have to defeat. Oh, you know what? They should do a flight of dragons game for the Amico. That would Cause be cool. there was all kind. there was multiple dragons. I don't think we just talked about Tron, didn't we? Tron. Yeah. We, that was the first thing we talked about. Did we, uh, I know we mentioned it. We talked much about it. Well, no, probably not. It was amazing, an amazing movie with uh, some of my, one of my favorite character actors, uh, who played Jack the Ripper. 
actually. Um, like Jack the Ripper. I, I, I've seen so many documentaries about theories on that guy. Oh, really? We'll have it's, to talk about that sometime. It's so interesting. Um, I'm, uh, why can't I think of the guy? Um, who are you trying to think of? The, the bad guy. What am I again, remember? again, it's one of these moments where I'm like, uh, you know, who was the star? Bruce Boxleitner is that the star? Yeah, Bruce Boxleitner. Um, David War David Warner. I didn't even see the name, but I knew it as soon as I saw his face. Uh, he was in a turtle movie, but he played in the movie which I really like. And what year was that? Was that eighty three, maybe? When, um, time after time came out. My charming wife bought it for me. Um, I'm not familiar with that movie. Yeah. It's uh, H.G. Wells. Um, Roddy McDowell plays H.G. Wells, and he's created a time machine. And unbeknownst to him, his friend, is who's a doctor, is played by David Warner. He finds out early on in the movie that he's Jack the Ripper. And he has just told him and a bunch of his buddies about his time machine. And so I'll then he it. jumps in to the time machine and, and leaps forward. There's two subjects that will get me to watch a movie. Aliens and time travel. I'm yeah. A I'm a sucker for those two things. Yeah. Un un time travel. Wow. It's Unbelievable. It was, it was three years earlier in 1979 when that came out. Hey, I'm just looking here. There's a sh there was a movie in 82 called Time Rider, The Adventures of Lyle Swan. Yep. Never heard of it. But the screenplay was by Michael Nesmith. That was by Nesmith? Yeah, because that's the one movie. I mentioned earlier when you oh, said Time you Walker. Oh, that's right. You said Time Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Was that any good? By Michael Nesmith. I remember the movie. It was on cable. It was one of those that I saw on cable. I I, I saw it existed. I don't know that I watched it, but it does have Fred Ward. Fred Wait. Ward's in it. Uh, Fred Ward sounds so familiar. Fred Ward played, uh, he played the uh, executioner in Remo, Remo Williams. He was Remo Williams. Wait, I posted something before, it just caught my eye, I thought it was funny. There's a movie from 82 called Hospital Massacre, which, which sounds like a classic right there. It does, right. Here's the best part, starring Barbie Benton. <laughs> I'd watch it just for that. And if you couldn't guess, it's a horror film. Barbie Benton. She was, yep. She's she was popular in the, what, late 70s, early 80s? Yes, quite quite <coughs> on the beautiful side. And um, I think she was on uh, A Love Boat a few times, wasn't she? Uh-huh, yep. Yep, yep, yep. Wouldn't it be great yep, to be yep, an actor yep. back then and to have been in both Love Boat, Fantasy Island, and... Love American style. That'd be like hey. a, a trifecta, like nobody's <laughs> business. The hat trick. <laughs> the seventies hat trick. The plane. The plane. <laughs> uh, here's a movie that we haven't even mentioned yet. What? And it's unbelievable that we haven't mentioned this movie. But here's the reason why. I do remember that it uh, in in checking this out for tonight. I do remember it being on the list. I can't believe we haven't mentioned it yet. But again, like ET, it didn't really it didn't really catch me. Poltergeist. Uh, wasn't a big wasn't a big one for me. That was the one with that little girl. What's her name? Uh yeah. Um Dominique Dunn, is that or Oh wait, now I'm thinking. I'm thinking of uh, Heather O'Rourke. Uh, Poltergeist. Poltergeist. Wait, am I thinking the wrong movie? Poltergeist. Yeah, I'm thinking the wrong movie. 
Beatrice Strait. Is that who it is? Yeah, we, we brought up Airplane 2 earlier. I've never, I don't think I've seen it. Which is odd because I loved Airplane so much. I don't know why I didn't ever watch it. Ch Heather or Heather Mich Heather Michelle O'Rourke was an American child actress. She made her debut after being discovered by director Steven Spielberg while visiting MGM Studios. Spielberg promptly cast her in the horror film Poltergeist as Carol Ann Freeling, and O'Rourke earned recognition for her performance. And then she would pass away not long after. Lance, this movie sounds so familiar. I think I've seen it. Wow, that's almost like the. Um, she was thirteen. That's very close to like the Philadelphia Experiment. The, not just the movie, but the uh, the story that people claim actually happened about. Uh, right, right. The ship going around. Yeah, that's right. Right. Yeah, I never did watch it. That just seemed. I <clears throat> I, uh, I listened to Art Bell a lot when I worked in Second Shift. Um, mm -hmm. He just did a lot of alien time travel stuff. And um, he had a guy on there named Al Bielik who claimed he was on the ship of the Philadelphia experiment that actually disappeared. Him and his brother. And um, I won't go all the way into it, but basically it disappeared. And as it was like moving through time, he said people were getting tossed off. Um, when it, they came back and landed, he said it didn't really work right. Some people had, when they came back, they like fused into the into the ship. Some people were tossed off. Um, he said that him and his brother actually jumped off. Wait. Yeah, they jumped wow. off. And they ended up, this is so weird, they ended up, this is supposed to be in the 40s, I think. And they ended up in 1890 or 1984. And then the people who did the experiment way back then found out about them and so they it's a whole a whole crazy story i mean the guy might be nuts he might be telling the truth i don't know it didn't really matter it was an interesting story dude <laughs> there's it. a lot of crap that we can't explain you know there's just things we don't know i mean i don't know huh. that would be interesting if you go back in time and stop some horrific <clears throat> event would that be good or could you possibly trigger something that's even worse because of doing that? Right. God. Butterfly effect. That's why I love time travel so much. It's so interesting. And that's what made Back to the Future so cool. Because you know, you know, I had only I had only because I thought we were doing a show. Originally I thought we were doing a show about like our favorite movies that have video games. So um Back to Future is my favorites, but I'd never seen two and three. So over the weekend, I watched those. I never Wait a minute. You'd never seen two and three until this weekend? Yes, that's true. But now I've seen them. I mean, thank God, because I would have to reassess our relationship. And um, I'm glad I did, because I actually liked both of them. Oh, and yeah. I also liked, <laughs> oh, we talked about this really early, Pete, Night Shift, what a great movie. Papa Pete, tell me, who got their debut in that movie? Who was one of the frat boys that got his debut in that movie? So anyway, go ahead. You were talking about Back to the Future. Um, yeah, I like both both movies. Oh, but before I watched those two, I watched a documentary about... Um, but I watched a documentary about um, Back to the Future... That had the I could cast in it. Uh, Michael J. Fox was talking the the guy who uh, cre uh, like the co creator. Oh, yeah. here's something. Oh, that's not who Stewart's thinking of. Was that Michael? He, tried, he was a frat boy. Oh, a You're frat partying boy. in a morgue. He was right in the middle of the crowd. But the guy who co wrote the movie, he came up to. Uh, he was telling the story about how he came up with it. And it's the weird thing. It happened in St. Louis. He was from St. Louis, grew up in U City. He had flown oh. home to, to hang out with his parents for a while. And while he was there, 
he was looking through his uh, dad's. <laughs> he was looking through his dad's yearbook, and he started thinking, "I wonder what my dad was like in high school, and I wonder if I would have been friends with him, or if I would have, you know, hated him back then." That's awesome. From that, he wrote the the movie. Unbelievable. Now, yeah, I'm happy here, which is really weird. So, did have you? I haven't checked it all out yet, but did you see where Eric Stoltz, you know, was originally? Oh, in the documentary I was watching, they showed quite a bit of him in the film. Yeah, and they had filmed a lot of it. It was so interesting. They actually said it was so weird because they all said the same thing. He's a good actor. It's, and they said it just wasn't working. Yeah, like it just didn't feel right with him in the lead role. Yeah, and, uh, they showed quite a bit of it. And what's really weird is they showed like uh, some of the scenes, and he had a different outfit. He didn't have that um, vest, the vest preserver. <laughs> so he had a completely different look. They can only change everything around. I'll take a Pepsi free. Look, <laughs> if you're gonna get a Pepsi, you're gonna pay for it. All right, just give me a tab. <laughs> I can't give you a tab unless you order something. It's the best. It's one of the best playoffs of who's on first I've ever seen. All right. So Stuart and <laughs> there's a great line. The Fonz banging Diane from Cheers, who's a hooker. <laughs> <laughs> hey. So How would Pete, you... it was Kevin Costner. God, that was a long time ago. How wow. would you rank Back to the Future? One, two, three, as your favorites. It's tough. One, number one. Of course. But the other two, I think, um, they're so different. You know, that's what really made, that's what, now we're getting off of 82, but it's okay. Because we're kind of done with 82. Movies of 82, that we're done with, and we got to wrap this up anyway. But holy crap. Think about two and three. Two was like uh that was like an uber um like pop reference in the future. You had jaws, you had sports because of the almanac, you had skateboards of the future, you had now you're you know you're going back in. Uh, and watching things from the prior movie. So you have that pop uh, icon to play around with, but there was so many things, but you know, you didn't have any of that really to play off just a little bit, Clint Eastwood, but that's not pop. You know, that's not, that's not some pop culture reference. I mean, it kind of is, I suppose, but spaghetti Westerns, but you know, the, the third one kind of stands on its own. Uh, as kind of a pre steampunk kind of a movie, you know, with the with that, um, you know, so I think they're equally as good. I I wasn't as impressed by the second one and the third one, um, but Me either. But know, I thought they were still pretty good. They are very good. I mean, I would actually watch them again. Do I you would, know the joke? Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I would. I would, for me, I'd rank them one, three, two. That's kind of what I would do. That's kind I like, of where I was. I like a huge difference for me between two and three. I like three just a little bit more, but right. they're they're way better than I thought they were. I thought they were going to be kind of crappy because no, as much as I like Back to the Future, I I can't say I ever hear anyone talking about two and three. It's always the first movie. Yeah, Zemeckis was hot <laughs> at that time. He was just in that documentary they talked about how the whole movie came about. They. uh how they kind of used his pull to get it through. Cause originally nobody wanted to make the movie cause right. everyone said the same thing. They said time travel movies do not sell, which I don't get time travel is the best thing ever. Yeah. But did you see the time machine with guy Pierce? No. Yeah. I just didn't like it. I didn't like it. Now you want a good movie time wise. Have you seen time cop with, Jean Claude Van Damme. Ooh, don't think so. It sounds really. If you haven't, there's another one for our list. I better write down. I better start spreading some ink on some paper. Man, 
Um, that that's, was a good movie. That's why I love listening to Rebel back way back then. Uh, when you read time travel stuff, because he'd have people on who, you know, like, um, there's a guy named John Titor, T I T O R. Now, yeah. claims, I think, was it in the 90s? I think he. He was on some time travel message board. He claimed he was a time traveler, and there's a, a whole story behind it. But it's stuff like that I love hearing because, like I said, I don't even care if it's real or not. I'd like to hear the stories and then try to decide how I feel about it. Yeah. Whether I think this is plausible or not. Right. Because can you right. imagine if there's is some time traveling around? I mean, that's. I well, think did you. As you were growing up, did you see that animated film that they made about the time time tunnel? Is that what it's called? What's what? No, Wrinkle in Time. Wrinkle in Time. Oh yeah, yeah, or Wrinkle in Time. Remember they did the animated one with the guy. Isn't it the guy and the dog or the something? There's the dog with the clock. Uh, I don't remember. There was an animated version that they did. I thought back in the day. Um, isn't that what it was, or was it another movie? Well, Wrinkle in Time was the book by, um, yeah, and it's recently been made into a what was the other one, though? Oh, the Phantom Toll Booth. No, I haven't heard about that. Oh, really? Mm. Oh, yeah, that's the one I'm thinking of because there were illustrations in the book. Um, Phantom Toll Booth. I have to find that. Yep, there it is. And um, yeah, you need to check that out. Hmm. I think they actually did. Yeah, 1970, they did an animated film. It was done by Chuck Jones uh, and Abe Levitow. Um, Christopher Lloyd. Mel Blanc did voices in it. Yeah, Milo is a boy who is bored with life. One day he comes home to find a toll booth in his room. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, we ha we should check it out. Look at the story from Papa P here. Hmm. Drank in the bar and talked to people. They crossed into Canada. Canada was biking on through the Maritimes. Weird. That is weird. Wait, Chris drove through a little podunk town. In the 80s, he stayed at a hotel on the U.S. side one night, drank in the bar, and talked to people, then crossed into Canada and was biking on through the Maritimes. Wow. That's crazy. Hey, I just said hello, too, to a friend of mine up there in Canada today. Wished him a happy Thanksgiving. Hmm. Told him we'd miss him because they're not going to be able to make it to Florida this year. Hey, Pete, I got a quick Same. question. Was this the 80s? Oh, well, this had to be after Taxi because Taxi started in the seventies. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So he was already he was really popular though. That's wild. And then Zemeckis used him again when he did um, Roger Rabbit, an amazing film. In that documentary, they mentioned that the original DeLorean was at Universal Studios, and originally it was kind of set out front, and then I guess more movies came out. They're like, eh. So they just they threw it in the back, and they said it was just laying in the back, and anybody could go up and touch it. It was just laying there, just sitting there, and they said people just started stealing things, stealing parts off of it because there was no uh, nothing around it, nothing around to guard it. So people were just stealing stuff off of it, and so they finally, when he found out, he goes, "This this isn't right." He goes, "We gotta fix this." So they ended up redoing the whole car, and yeah. Well, I'll have, to, I'll have to find my pictures. Christine and I got pictures with uh, with Doc, you know, at the uh, at Universal. So I'll have to find those. Or that was fun. Jig, Jim Ignatowski from Tax. <laughs> my si hey, look at that. Lance says his sister works for Universal Studios. Warehouse for props and equipment. That's pretty cool. People just left him alone. My, uh, you know, Brian, my brother-in-law. He, yeah, he had a story when he was, uh, I guess, God, Brian. He was, he was in, well, of course, you know, grew up in North County, so he was there. And they stopped at a steak and shake late at night. He said they went in there. Grandpa Munster 
you know, Al Lewis was sitting there. Yeah. Eating. So they, they just joined him. They talked with him and I was like, what are the odds of walking to a steak and shake in St. Louis and running it to grandpa Munster? Grandpa Munster. <laughs> That'd be the best thing ever, wouldn't it? Did you say you're sucking that plate dry? <laughs> <laughs> Are you just hanging out until one of these waitresses have to go home? I don't know if I've ever, I don't know if I've ever run across anyone famous like that. And the only time I ever ran into somebody in a place where it wasn't expected was probably, um, uh, <laughs> here we go again, Scott. Um, sure, I could say his name any other day. Man, this is horrible. Why does this happen? Scott Ian. See, I did it. I didn't have to look. Scott Ian from Anthrax was sitting in the uh, airport when I landed in California to go to the NAM show. He was just sitting there on his, here's how how long ago it was, on his BlackBerry. BlackBerry. Yeah, he's typing away, texting away on his BlackBerry. And I stopped and quietly said, hello, Scott, how's it going? And he, he typed out a couple more words, and then he looked up and said something to me. Get out. <laughs> Get away from me. Leave me alone. And then he yelled security. <laughs> he was probably texting somebody, some assholes. Or something. If you don't hear from but me. I was very quiet, so I didn't bring any attention. Huh. So anyway. Right. Well, should we wrap well, it up? Let's wrap it up. Go I game, go. Subscribe. If you're digging it, if you're loving it. We love these guys that are chiming in. Thank you, everybody, for popping in, especially Papa Pete for popping in. Popping in. Relic Gamer, Lance. Who was my other one up there, too, earlier? Oh, why can't I say it? Wait a minute. Basket case. That sounds so familiar. Yeah, it does to me, too. But An 82? Yeah. That's it was in the list. It's... Huh. I don't think I saw that. Huh. Is it any good? I don't know. I don't know that I ever saw it. What? Yeah, Lady Ventress with the 48 hours. So the taxi <laughs> where Christopher Lloyd takes a driving test, he tries to cheat and asks, what does yield mean? They say, slow down. He goes... That's really slow. This is maybe their greatest episode ever. <laughs> That's like SpongeBob, one of my favorite SpongeBob. I don't think I like your tone. How's this? <laughs> but he was, he was filling out his, his uh, application at one point, and it said uh, "color of eyes," and someone looked at his eyes and they just said "bloodshot." And I think Alex said, "Just write down brown." And so <laughs> Jim's trying to fill out some more. And he's like, oh, he's like, this is the most reading I've done in years. And he's like, oh, my brown eyes hurt. <laughs> oh, such a great episode. Okay, so bad oh, my Lord. is on Tubi. All right. <coughs> All right. All right. I guess so, that's it. Um, I thought so, it was yeah. about an hour, but somehow we've gone in almost an hour and 50. I know. So next time, Jeff is calling the year or the style of movie. So thank you, Jeff, for letting us do this one. Was there was fun. just so much. There was just so much music tied. And, and let's let's make sure. I'm going to make that one last point about 1982. This was a year when the soundtracks really, bam, it was about the songs. Eye of the Tiger, Megaforce. Oh. Uh, what was the other one that was on? The, there was another one on the list that had, um, well, Tron. Tron had a big song from uh, uh, from Journey on it. Uh, so, you know, there was all kinds of these movies coming out that year that had big songs. So that's where they started realizing the magic of what the soundtracks could do. And the next Rocky soundtrack was huge. We'll cover that when we talk about Rocky. Hey, look, Lady Ventress was, uh, is Relic Gamer's wife. How about that? What? Relic Gamer, you got to get her to show up more. Yeah. Yeah. Give her a big hug for that 48 hours. That was awesome. Or give her a hug for 48 hours. <laughs> She's your wife. 
All right, guys, we'll take off. I think that was a, was a wrap. Go game, go. Subscribe. Yeah. We love having you here. We'll see you soon. All right, see you guys.